Hi guys, welcome to today's screencast which is going to be on gaseous exchange. So that is what we're going to be doing over the next two lessons. We're going to be discussing gaseous exchange, also known as or commonly referred to in your exams as diffusion. So first of all, over the past couple of weeks we've looked at um, the mechanics of breathing, so how we actually get oxygen into the lungs and how we remove carbon dioxide out of them, so how we breathe it out. So we've looked at the mechanics. What we're actually going to be looking at now is how we are going to use this. So how are we going to use this oxygen and what are we going to do to get this oxygen to the working muscles? So in today's screencast, it's just going to be the basic functions of gaseous exchange. And then we're going to build on this in tomorrow's lesson with um, some memory methods. First of all, just to give you an insight into the type of question you may actually be asked in the exam. Here um, you've got for a performer at rest, explain gaseous exchange between the blood and muscle tissue cells. Now at rest is what we're actually going to be going through in um, with this screencast, so hopefully this will make a tiny bit more sense to you, um, but obviously it won't make complete sense until after tomorrow's lesson. Tomorrow we're also going to look at drawing exercise um, in some detail. So second question, explain why more oxygen dissociates from the blood into the muscle cells during exercise. Hopefully as of next week you'll know these questions and you'll be able to answer them, get everything down absolutely fine using the memory methods that we give you. So, structure of the respiratory system. You don't need to know the details, complete ins and outs of every single name of these. However, it is important to get a kind of appreciation of the structure of the respiratory system. So, as we actually breathe in, so we've got the nasal cavity, we breathe air in through the nasal cavity. It comes down the trachea and then it divides, splits um, via bronchus into the lungs. Now, in the bronchus you have bronchioles which these little branches, tree-like branches here, these are bronchioles. And then finally, the important part, you get the alveoli, and this is what we are interested in, the alveoli here. And then around here, the red and the blue vessels, they are our capillaries, and the capillaries is where gaseous exchange actually takes place. So what we really need to focus on now is this alveoli just here. So we breathe air in, breathe in, shoots down through the nasal cavity, down the trachea, down the um, bronchioles, into the alveoli. Now imagine this air is rich with oxygen. So this oxygen-rich air goes to the alveoli. This is the first point of interest um, with gaseous exchange. We need to look at how oxygen is transferred from the alveoli. So we've got oxygen in the alveoli now. We need to look at how it is transferred from the alveoli into the blood and vice versa how carbon dioxide from the blood is transferred from the blood into the alveoli. And then we're going to go further down into the body and we're going to be looking at how um, oxygen is transferred to the muscles from the blood and carbon dioxide is transferred from the muscles to the bloodstream. So that is what we're going to be focusing on um, in the next couple of lessons. First of all, gas exchange between the alveoli and the blood. So. Between the alveoli and the blood, so within the lungs only, because the alveoli are only in the lungs, this is known as external respiration. So where does it take place? So does it take place in the alveoli, in the lungs, or does it take place at the muscles? They're the kind of questions we need to be asking, answering. What are the gases involved and where do they move? So there are two key gases involved in PE. When we're talking about gases in PE, we're talking about oxygen, and carbon dioxide. So we need to know what are the gases involved and where do they move to. So you've got oxygen, carbon dioxide. Where does oxygen diffuse? So from the alveoli into the bloodstream. Why does carbon dioxide diffuse? So why does carbon dioxide leave the bloodstream into the alveoli or why does carbon dioxide leave the muscle into the bloodstream? If you can answer these questions at the end of the screencast, we're going to be flying, okay? So that's quite important. It's quite good that hopefully by the end of the screencast, you're going to be able to answer these and we'll be um, doing all right there. So this is just a YouTube link that you can use at the end of this screencast if it is just your mind's blown a bit, okay? So this will give you a simple summary of what we need to know. However, we need to be able to translate that simple summary um, into a credible answer which is what we're going to be looking at doing um, through today's corner notes. So key points, 
these will be, these questions are going to be on your call now notes most certainly, okay. So which two gases exchange? So the two gases we're really focusing on is oxygen and carbon dioxide. So oxygen gets breathed into the lungs and are in the alveoli, we need to get the oxygen into the bloodstream. Carbon dioxide, we need to get the blood from the, um, the carbon dioxide from the blood to the alveoli to be breathed out and we also need to remove the carbon dioxide from the muscle into the bloodstream and we need to get oxygen into the muscle from the blood. Okay, which two sites does gaseous exchange take place at? It takes place at the alveoli with the blood and the muscle tissue with the blood. They are the two key points. If we go back to the previous slide, where did it take place? It takes place either at the alveoli with the blood or at the muscle with the blood. And what are the gases involved? Oxygen and carbon dioxide. So partial pressure. So partial pressure is the pressure of a pressure a gas exerts within a mixture of gases. So for example, if you have a high partial pressure of one gas, oxygen, the other gas, carbon dioxide, will have a low partial pressure within that mixture. And vice versa, if you have a high partial, pre partial pressure of carbon dioxide, you can have a low partial pressure of oxygen. So it just it's it's the opposite, okay? Diffusion special rule. So gases move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. So it quite makes it makes sense. If you've got loads of oxygen in the alveoli, you're going to have hardly any oxygen in the bloodstream around the alveoli. You're going to have a lot of carbon dioxide. So you're going to diffuse. The oxygen is going to go from the alveoli into the bloodstream, and the carbon dioxide that's in the bloodstream is going to go from the bloodstream into the alveoli because there's no carbon dioxide in the alveoli. So gases move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. And then finally, we have a diffusion gradient. So diffusion gradient is the difference between high and low pressure of one gas. So the diffusion gradient, if we're talking about the oxygen in the alveoli and oxygen in the blood, in the lungs, there's going to be more oxygen in the alveoli than there is in the blood. So that difference between those two is known as diffusion gradient. And hopefully it'll make a bit more sense at the end of this um, screencast. So um, just want to point, point gases exchange is what happens between the alveoli and the blood. So this is the point that we're going to be getting onto first of all. And I just want us to got this picture back up just so you can make sense of it. So we breathed air in, it's come down the track here into the um, lungs. And now we have oxygen in the alveoli and we have the bloodstream which has got deoxygenated blood in, so we have carbon dioxide in the blood. So the first point, gaseous exchange, is what happens between the alveoli and the blood. So I'm going to go through one gas at a time, and then we'll go through this now. Okay, so gaseous exchange between the alveoli and the blood. So gas one, we're going to be talking about oxygen. So the gas is oxygen, so there's loads of oxygen within the alveoli. So area, alveoli, and blood. So there's loads of oxygen in the alveoli. So the partial pressure, we have a high partial pressure for oxygen in the alveoli. Therefore, we need the opposite in the blood. So we've got a low partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. You've got to think, when the blood travels back to the lungs, it's deoxygenated blood. Deoxygenated, oh, there's not much oxygen in there because it's been used by the muscles. So now this blood goes back to the heart, right atrium, right ventricle to the lungs to get oxygenated. So the blood in the lungs has low oxygen, doesn't have really any oxygen in there. However, the alveoli has loads of oxygen because we just breathed air in. So we have a high partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli and a low partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. Diffusion gradient, so what's the difference? Okay, this is called an oxygen diffusion gradient because of the difference within the oxygen in the alveoli and the bloodstream. Gas movement, gases move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure, so oxygen diffuses from the alveoli to the blood. So that is the gaseous exchange between the alveoli and the blood. Let's go through that again. Breathe in oxygen. The area is the alveoli and the blood. Got a high partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli, low partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. The diffusion gradient, so this is an oxygen diffusion gradient. Gases move from an area of high pressure, or high partial pressure, to an area of low partial pressure. 
Therefore, oxygen moves, diffuses, so it goes from the alveoli and it transports into the blood because there's no oxygen in the blood. That's where the oxygen wants to get to. So vice versa, if you turn it around, gas is exchanged between the alveoli and the blood and we're talking about the second gas. So gas two is got carbon dioxide. So we've spoken about oxygen, the one gas. Now we're talking about carbon dioxide. So the gas is carbon dioxide. Area, we're still talking about the alveoli and the blood. Partial pressure, we have a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood. We've got a low partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli. So the diffusion gradient is called a carbon dioxide diffusion gradient. Gas moves from an area of high partial pressure to an area of low partial pressure, i.e. carbon dioxide moves from the blood into the alveoli. So carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood to the alveoli and we breathe out carbon dioxide. That is gaseous exchange at rest between the alveoli and the blood. We need to discuss tomorrow, we're going to go through gaseous exchange between the blood and the muscle at rest. Then we're going to also discuss um, what happens during exercise. So it's really important that you actually understand this before tomorrow's lesson. It is key, okay? As I said, if this kind of makes sense to you, we're halfway there, we're flying. So what I want you to do is, you need to feel confident on the key points. If we go back to these key points, you need to feel confident on these. Which two gases exchange? Which two gases are we on about when we're talking about gaseous exchange? We're talking about oxygen and carbon dioxide. Isn't biology now? We don't need to think of loads of different complicated gases. In PE, we just concentrate on oxygen and carbon dioxide. Which two sites does gaseous exchange take place? It takes place at the alveoli with the blood, which we've just gone through. And it also takes place at the muscle tissue with the blood, which we're going to go through in tomorrow's lesson. What is partial pressure? It's the, it's the pressure a gas exerts within a mixture. So if you've got a high partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli, you're going to have a low partial pressure of oxygen within the bloodstream. Vice versa, high partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the bloodstream, it means you've got a low partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the lungs. Diffusion, special rule, important. Gases move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. And finally, a diffusion gradient. The difference between high and low pressures of one gas. So the difference between the pressure of oxygen in the alveoli and the pressure of oxygen in the bloodstream. That is the diffusion gradient. So if you can get your corner notes down on those, feel confident with them, and um, we'll continue this in tomorrow's lesson. Thank you.